Rolling. Happy. Rolling, rolling, rolling. Rolling. Hey, hey monkeys, how you doing? Damien Keys here. Welcome to number 34. Four? Oh, it is 34, 34. yeah. <laughs> okay. Hashtag Ask Damo Show, where you get to ask questions. We'll do our best to answer them. Uh, if we don't know, we go away, figure it out, come back and ask you next week. So uh, with me, as always, is Melissa. Hello. And we have a, oh, we we have have a, a present. Fudge for that. It's gonna be. All right. <laughs> so I didn't have a look, but I did open it to make sure it wasn't like, you know, you know. anthrax. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I saw it was t-shirt, so I'm hoping it's a band. Yeah. Let's see what we got. Ooh, Ooh, we've got a tin. Oh, stuff. Savannah. Oh, I do love stuff. Ooh. Oh, yeah, I love stuff. Right, so don't forget, if you're a band, if you're a business, if you want some promotion, this is free. What you got to do is send it in. Oh, look at this. We've got loads ah. of stuff. We've got stuff for the wall. You read that. Loads we've of stuff. got stuff for the wall. We've got stuff to listen oh, to. Oh, this is a nice long letter. <clears throat> oh, this is a really, this is a really well put together EP. Love that. Um, oh, this British is great. Rock band, Savannah. Wow, um, that's a letter. Yeah, yeah, I'll let you read this one later, but this is from Jason from Savannah, and he sounds, uh, it sounds like a lovely dude. Do you want black or do you want white? Um, which one do you want? I think I'm quite partial to black. All right, I'll take the white one. Okay. I was kind of hoping for this one. <laughs> Good. I will wear this on my Instagram. Yeah, these there. are awesome. I really like these. Right, so guys, go and check out the band Savannah. We will be having a listen to this. Uh, we're going to put these stuff on the wall. If you want to get your stuff featured, put on the wall. This will be a good one. We'll get this maybe underneath the don't be a dick thing. Yeah. Um, oh, I like, cards. I like doing those. Amazing. <laughs> good. Brilliant. Thank oh, you nice very much. Guys. Awesome. Right. So, we have some questions. Do you have some questions? I am apparently ill. I'm not ill. <laughs> don't feel ill. You just keep telling him he is. Everyone <laughs> tells me I'm ill. I'm not ill. I'm fine. I'm <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so. Question one. Mm -hmm. How much music is too much to release? Is there a danger of annoying my fan base? Okay. That's from Alice. It is because we're, mm. because I constantly talk about releasing EPs and how I'm not a massive fan of EP and storing and storing mm. and storing and making something and then getting there and then putting out there and then saying, right, what's next? And it going round. Mm. And that sort of traditional cycle, I get it with albums, I yeah. do understand it with albums, but, but what is going to happen in between? Because what happens is when you're busy creating an EP, it, it, it can take your focus away from looking after your audience. Mm. And so what bands tend to do, if it's done properly, I've got no problem with it. And these guys, this is all done really, really well, but this is a lot of time and effort yeah, to do all this. Yeah. It's a lot of time. And then, you know, I don't know these guys, but if a band comes along and then says, good, done my EP, we'll have an EP launch, buy my EP. Yeah. No one's going to buy it, that's the problem. So you've got to have proper strategies, which is why I'm making a, a series yeah. on how to sort of, how to get your EP distributed and how to actually sell it. But one thing I talk about a lot is actually just putting music out in some form or another. Now this question relates to that of what about just making music and putting it out there, but if you're going to do that, how much is too much? because we are in a time now where you can do that and it's about consumption. It's about the end user at all times. It's about the end user. And now if you look at the world of video, you've got people like Casey Neistat who changed the game when it came to the, to, to vlogging. Mm -hmm. So people would walk around with a camera very badly sort of cut and just, and just shot in their own face. And, and then what you'd have is you'd have a five to 10 minute vlog of people's day. Casey Neistat came along and said, I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm going to make it look like it's like cinematic. I'm going to yeah. make it look amazing. And, and everyone watched the first one and said, yeah, brilliant. You try and keep that up mm -hmm. for the next six months to a year. He did. He's massive. He's Casey Neistat. And he changed the game. And now you've got people like Peter McKinnon who are, who are even doing it even sort of more cinematic on a daily, mm -hmm. pretty much daily basis. And so the music industry will have to go to that at some point because people are expecting... Um, the end result faster. Mm. We live in a time now where I have not got time. Yeah. I haven't got time to cook stuff. <laughs> Just give it to me made and I will eat it and carry on with my day. And so we're living in a time and, and I know people are going to watch it and say, say, well, it's different with music. Mu music is something to be cherished. And mm. 
Sometimes it is, but a lot of the times it isn't. A yeah. lot of the times music, we just we just take it, we consume it, we go, no, I like that. And we listen to it a bunch of times mm. over a period of three or four weeks and we never listen to it ever yeah. again. And so, yes, we've got music that we grew up with in 70s, 80s and 90s mm. that is always there and always will be there. It's changed our lives. But those are very small numbers and a lot of everything else is just we take it we consume it we go love it next next oh, next next like and that works absolutely products, next yeah. next 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 so if you're an artist or a band and you can churn music out fast fast enough how fast should be should you be doing it personally and this is where we're going to talk about this yeah. i've been doing it every day mm. and so but but let me just put a side note on that i would be putting out music every day I don't think you'd be pissing off your fan base if you do it in the right way. Mm. So for example, you can't put out these every week. Yeah. You just can't, you can't physically mm. do that. So it has to change. So, so you can still do this. You can still build up to these things which you're very, very proud of, but you can still be putting out music on a daily slash weekly basis. Here is what I would do mm. if I was an artist. I would be writing every single day. I would be putting out music to my audience every day, but I would pick a place where that was the content that I was making. Mm. So for example, I would say if I were, I don't know, the next up and coming Foo Fighters, mm. I would say, I'm writing so much stuff. When you come and follow me on, on, on YouTube um, or SoundCloud, mm. if you want, whichever one you want, whichever platform you want, um, that's when I'm gonna be putting music on which, I'm, which I may or may not release. Mm. And I'm just gonna churn it out and I'm gonna be making videos for it and I'm just gonna, I'm gonna be making music, music, music. But what I'm going to do then is I'm going to, in, for me, I would involve the audience on the best songs. The way I would do that is the insights, the stats on the tracks, the engagement, the, the stuff that people obviously like and my personal favorite choices. And I'd be collating the best bits and I'd be making an album and I'd have that album almost as the, the story to the journey of something which we can then sell or distribute. I think if you do that, people have a choice to say, um, I get the album, I like the band, but the super fans get to come on the journey of the music. Now, you can't just put out music and just say, buy my single, buy my single, buy my single. So this goes back to the saving the music industry, which is if you are then putting out music every day, you are gonna get a lot more traction with your audience because people are, are, are dipping in and out of it when they want to. And so you're getting more of a fan base than you would if you just leave it for six months, you don't do a new, mm -hmm. new song, and then you say, by the way, new stuff, and people go, hooray, and I'm bored again. Yeah. And so what you've got then is you have to find ways of monetizing it. Mm -hmm. But as we found with the YouTube sort of system, as you're putting out content day in, day out, day in, day out, it builds an audience, the audience get more attached to it, and then people become reliant on your thing. Mm -hmm. So if you're saying, here's my song today, here's my song tomorrow, here's my song the next day, you do that for six months and then you just go, no song. Mm -hmm. People go, whoa, yeah. you've set a precedent. I expect those songs, it's, it, which is amazing. You've actually got people into a routine. I used to have this thing where I would watch a Casey Neistat's new video at breakfast. Mm -hmm. That was my thing. I would literally, I've got YouTube on my TV, I'd get up, I'd make poached eggs on toast, <laughs> I'd sit there and I'd sit there eating, watching Casey Neistat. Mm -hmm. Casey Neistat's videos were eight minutes, I'd watch it and, and then and then I'd go to work. That, yeah. was, that was my routine. One day Casey Neistat stopped and I was like, this is a, this is a disaster, mm. what am I going to do? The routine, be, be, it becomes part of that routine. Mm. Do you think that relies too much on fandom though? I mean, yeah. like super fandom. No, because, but I do think it relies on yeah. fandom. I, I do, but I, but I also think that that's the world we live in. Mm. So, so okay. I think there's two sides to this. I think there's what musicians want it to be. Yeah. And there's, there's what the world is. Yeah. As Gary Vaynerchuk puts it, the market's the market, but you know, that's just a, a wanky way of saying it. <laughs> <laughs> what it means is you can't change okay. the way people consume stuff. Yeah. You can't change that. And so what people want, what people expect um, is very difficult difficult to change so does it rely on on fandom yeah but we live in that world now mm. because if music is going to become worthless and priceless as, yeah. we, as we talk about if it's going to become that and if it is going to be just consumed and spat out and then next and then mm. eaten and spat out and then next and then next and then next and then next if that is going to be a thing then we have to acknowledge that with how we make the music because we can't spend one year making the most amazing beautiful awesome perfect perfection based piece of music which lasts three minutes that people go ah oh, next yeah because if you do that you go right give me a year i'll come back again it, it so it, 
you know, I'm not saying it's the only way mm. because if you create a piece of music that will change people's lives, which is what we'd all love to do, mm. if you can do that, amazing, fantastic. However, most people can't do that. Yeah. Most people are making music that people go, God, that's really, really mm. good, that is. And do you not think that you're at risk of alienating perhaps people that are interested in your band but perhaps aren't uh, and interested enough to want to see it every single day? Does that depend on the platform? Um, yes, I do, yeah. I do think you are at risk of alienating yeah. people. But my thing is a numbers game. So yeah. what I'm looking for is I am looking for people to come with me on the journey. If I lose a person who just says, oh, that Damien Key just annoys <laughs> the shit out yeah. of me, Every day, man, 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 what a righteous twat. Get it, totally get yeah. it. That person goes away. Mm. But if three other people go, he talks sense, yeah, I get three people. Yeah. So, I, you know, mm. I lose one person, I don't want to lose that person, but I cannot please everybody all the yeah. time. I just can't. So therefore, what I have to do is I have to say, look, I'm trying to look after the audience as much as I can. Mm. Some people will just say, nah, not for me. Mm. And then they will go on and do something else. As long as the audience is growing. And if I see the audience growing at, at this rate, and then from a shrinking point of view, the people who are leaving is this rate, mm. I'm doing the right thing. Yeah. What I can't do is just always look after the people who were there from the beginning, yeah. just because they were there from the beginning. Yeah. Because just because someone's found my page today or found your band page today, mm. it doesn't make them any less of a fan. It doesn't mean yeah. I'm less likely to buy your music. So can it alienate people? Yes. Does that mean you shouldn't do it? In my opinion, no. So for me, how much would I be putting out music? I'd be putting out music every day mm. exactly the same as i want to put out content every day yeah. and it's hard it's yeah. really hard and this is where Challenge, musicians yeah. this is where musicians struggle because they go but you can't mm. it's like so where's the balance yeah where's the line i know we're going on on this one but i think it's really important yeah, where is the well. balance where's the point where you can say I, I can't do it every day but if i really really am honest with myself I can put out a song a week. Yeah. So therefore you go, good, we'll build our strategy yeah. around a week, for example. So if it were me, that's what I would be doing. And I would also have all of the songs in some form that I, that I wasn't that happy with personally, I'd have that in a place mm -hmm. and go, guys, I'm not gonna release this, but not every song I write is a hit record. Yeah. Sometimes I write a song and I think, Ugh. Yeah. I'd put it somewhere. I'd be like, but go listen to it because yeah. it's still me. I've still written mm. written it. You know, when I go back and look at all my videos, sometimes I just go, oh, I was garbling. What was I talking about there? <laughs> Doesn't mean I, that, you know, still me, still still yeah. the way I, I'm, I'm creating stuff. So I personally think this, this time that we live in, there's nothing wrong with saying, here's the stuff that I don't want to release. It's, it's B-sides. It's the same as what it's always been. We're not yeah. happy with this. It's not as good, but it's still something that we can give to our yeah. audience. And if Dave Grohl came out now and said, I don't, I've got this new song, but I'm not that happy with it, so do you want me to play it to you? Mm. What does everyone say? Yes, yeah. yes. We won't judge you, Dave. Mm. Play me the song. Mm. And then he, he plays the song and we go, amazing. It might not be as good as the rest of the stuff, but we, go, oh, we, love, we love Dave, he's yeah. amazing. Because he's already said, I'm not gonna release this, but I just mm. thought, the song, so I'd play my new song. Okay. So that's what I would do. I'd have yeah. a place for it. It might be SoundCloud. It might be YouTube. But for me, if I could write more, I would write more. Yeah, so it, you know, content. Yeah, yeah, I would. I'd, it would be a positive way. I'd write more. I'd do more, and then I'd make more videos for it. And I'd, I, everything would be pushed to the to the place where I want people to go, which is everything conjures up to maybe this moment. Mm -hmm. So I'm writing five other songs. I'm still pushing this. Yeah. Everything's pushing this, pushing this, pushing this. Cool, right, I'll move on to question two. Okay. Uh, this is from Matt Jones. So he's saying, do musicians genuinely right, critique themselves enough? It's a good question. One. Yeah. That yes, is a good question. Um, and you know what, it's a really tough question because I think some musicians really critique them. Critique themselves oh, too much. So, yeah. and I'm just like, dude, honestly, like you are really good. Stop, yeah. stop with the, stop stop with the, the yeah. negative yeah. critique. But then others are just a little bit less self-aware and mm. just go in blindly and I'm just like, Oh, mm. you're not ready. And so <clears throat> two things I wanted to bring up with this questions, with this question is, um, is how people are being taught in this country and the music education because, and for me pers personally, similar kind of thing, 
you know, when, when it's educational, when it's helping people, mm. you want to give them all of the confidence from a, a man management or a band management point of view. Mm. When, when people are just coming through, you want to be like, you can do this. Yeah. It's going to be amazing. Keep going. And if someone says something nasty, you're like, don't listen. Yeah. You're amazing. And so you're trying to build people up. Mm. And then from the the opposite end of it then you start putting shit out there and the people who aren't close to you and they don't have that emotional tie-in the trolls mm. they, they're nasty yeah they yeah. really not they can be mm. horrible like mm. the, some of the stuff that i've had sent through i'm just like i don't know if it's illegal yeah but i think it's illegal yeah, to say yeah. those things to me you know but that's what you get you get mm. both ends and this is real life. This is real life where, you know, you've got friends and people that love you and audience and people that are with you on your journey that are just desperate for you to succeed. And then you've got the other side to it, which is people that just want you to die mm. in their own yeah, words, you know, really yeah. nasty. And so trying to bounce between the two is very hard. And being this musician, you are looking at, you know, you are looking at some, because everything nowadays is just so widely available online. It's very hard not to see musicians on some because someone will share something, mm. uh, you know. Some like, every so often, um, someone will just tag me into like a yeah. bass post, yeah. And I look at the bass player and I'll be like, "Yeah, what do <laughs> you do? That's incredible!" And part of me is like, "Oh, I love watching this. This is amazing. I'm, I'm like, I've got my social currency. I've got my social mm. standing because I've, I've seen this and it really, I'm a bass player too. Hooray!" Yeah, yeah. And part of me is just like, "I can never do that." <laughs> like oh that makes me feel yeah, terrible feel, yeah. <laughs> yeah it's really it's a really really tough thing and I never had that growing up because you know the internet's what 20 years old so so when I was growing up uh, and and learning the internet was really new mm. you know and it wasn't a share 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 so I compared myself to other bass players in my town and city mm. And no offense to people I grew up with from my town and city but I shat on all of you <laughs> so uh, but now, mm. I, the whole thing is the same thing, mm. but instead of my, my local town, it's the entire world. Yeah. And all of a sudden I'm going, oh, I'm, I'm, I, I'm the best in my local community, mm. but look at the, the world. There yeah. are people, and they've always been there. There's always been this, this crazy ability around the world dotted around. It's just now we can see it. Mm. And that is harsh. So musicians, musicians will see that and then critique themselves and be like, I can't compete with those yeah. people. But then other people where you get the X Factor, mm. the X Factor type thing where people go on the X Factor and just think, yeah, I think I'm going to win the X Factor. And, and, you, and, and you just think, how did you get here? Yeah. Like, and how are you allowed on TV? Like, it's just, <laughs> this is comedy. And so it's, it's, mm. it's, it's a very difficult one. I think, I think the main thing is, and, and the answer for me for this, is I like to surround myself with better people than myself yeah is what i would like to do so i want to surround myself with people that i trust their opinion mm. because i know that if i go and ask my mum she will tell me i'm awesome mm. because she's my mum yeah and she's lovely hi mum <laughs> and so she's gonna that's her job yeah that's what she's yeah. that's what she's there to do but also i also want i don't want to go to just the, the trolls in the world and yeah. just say tear me apart yeah but there are people in the world and the these yeah, there is. Yeah. And do you know what? And these middle people are hard to find and they are worth their weight in gold. People who like you but will be honest with you. Yeah. Tough. Yeah. Really tough. Especially people who like you and know what they're talking about mm. and prepare to actually give you these advice. Which is why I think, you know, I know I'm biased and, and, and it's a bit egotistical, but this is why I think this sort of channel is really, really important mm. because I want to be able to tell you the warts and all truths. Mm. I'm not going to rip, rip your demo apart online because I think that's mean. But at the same point, I'm not going to make bones. You know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to lie about it. Yeah. I, I, I'm, you know, I think musicians in the world at the moment are not doing enough. Mm. I feel like they're relying on too much luck. I feel like they're making too many excuses, and I think they're living in the past. Yeah. And so, how we deal with that is: you watch the videos, and you are self-aware and honest with yourself, and say, "Is this me? Is this what I'm doing?" Mm. So, I think when it comes to critiquing yourself, I think. I think a lot of musicians do it too much. Yeah. I think a lot of musicians don't do it enough. And I think it's very hard to find a balance. So the thing that you do is you go and find some kind of mentor. Yeah. So, you know, I've had two or three in my life that mm. I just I just trust their opinion. Yeah. And when the chips are down, when I need some advice, I can go to them and just say, I trust your opinion on this. Be honest. What do you think? Mm. And if they go, yeah, dude, it's bullshit. Yeah. I'll go, 
fine, yeah, great. At least you know. I, yeah. That's what I needed to hear. Yeah, I think it's just like um, constructive criticism, isn't it? As absolutely, just yeah. Criticism from, from people yeah. that you that you trust. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Okay, so question three is from Ari One, um, and he's asking: Is it worth it for older bands to not bother with trying to be current and to target purely older music fans? And if so, what would be some good strategies to do so? And the name. Kenobi. <laughs> Brilliant. Uh, yeah. So nostalgia is it worth? And so there was a there was a, an A part to the question, yeah. which was which was saying um, that there's lots of bands reforming from the '90s um, and sort of having this, having almost having their 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 golden era again, mm-hmm. sort of 20 years later from from you know the, the late '90s, and all of a sudden they're reforming, um, and there's this nostalgic '90s. Well, let me tell you, nostalgia nostalgia is huge. I mean, it's absolutely massive. Um, and bands, there are bands, I know this because I know a lot of bands that were very successful in the 90s, went away, didn't do anything. Well, I'll tell you what they did. They came and worked for me at BIM. Yeah. Then after that, they just reformed and went, oh, wow. But now we're in control. Yeah. So now all of a sudden we've come, we've come back again. We don't have the, the labels or other stuff. We've got our old catalogue. We can go out there and actually control this ourselves because we understand the way the music industry works. And they're making better money now than they were 20 years ago, which is amazing. And they're playing to bigger audiences yeah, a lot of the time yeah. now because the nostalgia is there. Mm. And so you get these bands that are they're going and playing. And when I was growing up, I was a, like a massive fan of Level 42 mm. because of the bass player. And Mark King is like, is like a hero of mine. And, you know, so much so that I own some of his basses. I'm just like a massive fan. Yeah. Whenever Level 42 tour, I just go. I just, because yeah. I'm just yeah. like, I just want that hour of nostalgia of mm. when I was a kid sitting in my bedroom, just going. Yeah. Uh, the difference now is when I go and see them now is um, all the people who turn up to the, in the car parks, they're all middle-aged men who drive like Porsches and stuff because yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're all everyone's grown up yeah because yeah. everyone's grown up and, 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 and so that's mm. and, that, and, and they but they've got the money to buy the t-shirts yeah. they've got the money to buy the tickets so all of a sudden you've got you know you haven't got a kid who goes oh I've got my fiver for a, for a drink when, I'm, when my, my mum gave me yeah, yeah. you've got no I've got, I've got a checkbook well mm. no, it's not nice. <laughs> I've got a credit card uh, so you know there's more yeah. m- money in it so you know but this question um, is, is uh, about targeting older music mm. fans. Now, part B to the answer to this is, what's brilliant about this is we are in a world now where age literally doesn't matter. Mm. All that matters is, are you doing something good enough that relates to people that mm. want to see it? So, so whether it's a niche, whether it's an age, it doesn't matter. Your job is to find your audience Mm. and so if you are looking at the 60s market and your music fits into the 60s market and it's good enough and you understand the game of how to do that there is literally nothing to stop you which is amazing so should you be looking at being current well I think there's I think there's when it comes to current um, and modern I think there's the strategy behind what you do mm. needs to be ultra modern. Yeah. But I think the music behind it doesn't. I think the music mm. behind it can be nostalgic. It can yeah. take people back. So, you know, if someone came along and just kind of went, yeah, we're just modern Rage Against the Machine, yeah. I'd be like, sold. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, sold. And yeah. so, and they can be 50. Mm. <laughs> as long as they're as good, as long mm. as they're amazing, I'd be like, yeah, I'm into that because I, I, I love Rage Against the Machine. So I think a big part of this for me is the strategy needs to be current, but right now you can target any age because yeah. like, you don't have to just target 15 year olds mm. just because I, I mean, I was 15 and I'm not 15 anymore. Mm. All of a sudden, you know, you go through your twenties and into your thirties and all of a sudden you don't go, ah, oh, yeah, no, nah, music sucks. <laughs> I don't. Yeah. And all my yeah. friends who are my age don't. We still mm. love music. We, we do. We still go to gigs. Absolutely. Yeah. And this idea of just like only young people discover new music. Mm. Do they bollocks? Like, I've got loads of friends that love music and loads of friends that we share music. And someone goes, have you heard this band? Like, yeah. we're, not, we're not that old. Yeah. So <laughs> I, don't, I don't buy into that. But mm. at the same point, I don't understand this newfangled kids music. Yeah. So, you know, I, I also like music that I like, mm. that I grew up with and nostalgia. So I think the best thing is, is about finding those people and, and not making this excuse that, that older people over the age of 30 have stopped buying music because they don't like it anymore mm. and they've given up on life and they just smell of victory. 
fix vapor rub and play dominoes <laughs> every day. It doesn't work like that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, people in their 60s uh, uh, live in, like, yeah. to jumping out of planes music, and, yeah. and, and, you know, and going to gigs all the time. When I go to gigs, I see loads of people of all ages. So the, the trick is, can you get to them? And that's where the modern strategy fits in. Yeah. But I think it's a great question because people like to make excuses. And I think, I think th this question for me is just about how you get to people. And, you know, my mum's on Facebook. Mm. So my mum can be marketed to. Yeah. Yeah. So many people yeah. there now, as you were saying earlier, how Absolutely. many people are on yeah. Facebook, you know, these exactly. days. It's, it's totally. crazy. Yeah. Okay, so then question four. Um, I'm filming my first music video next week, a bit nervous. Should I shout about it or keep it to myself until it's filmed and I'm happy with it? And then how should I distribute it across all my socials? And that's from Sean. Sean, good old Sean. Yeah, good we, old Sean. we love Sean, Sean's amazing. Sean is just an avid viewer and he gets involved and he engages. Mm. And good dude. I will, yeah, absolutely. I will help Sean every day until the cows come home because <laughs> I, value his, I value his engagement across mm. what I do so much. So, uh, yeah, okay, so this is interesting. So the bit I, I noticed about that question, I'm filming my first, new, uh, my new first music video next week. Bit nervous, mm. that bit there, bit nervous. Yeah. Should I shout about it? Well, if he didn't say a bit nervous, I would have said, yeah, yeah. shout about it, get out there. This is a message, we're mm. doing this, but bit nervous. And I think this is your first one. And so therefore for me, maybe don't. Because the the most important thing is that you're comfortable with this and I wouldn't want you to shout about it and then it not going as well as you think and then you feel like you need to put it out and you're not happy with it. And, and confidence in this game is very, very important. Yeah. And when you start doing videos, I remember it myself, I remember making videos and seeing the first few and I was like, I really want them to be great, I really want yeah. them to be great. Now, I'm just like, film me, get the point across, mm -hmm. get it out. And, and, and that's more important. The point yeah. is more important. But at the beginning, I was very really much more hard getting like comfortable. With Absolutely, you know, and, and it takes time, you know. Yeah. And, and we talk about you know this this as is videos. But if you talk about gigs, you know everybody watching this that's a musician will remember their first gig and remember the pressure that they put on themselves and how much worry and nerves and it, and and then you've done ten gigs and you just feel a little bit more calm. You know, lots of people are watching this. I've done hundreds and hundreds of gigs. Now the idea of going on stage that doesn't bother them they love going on stage but they feel differently to the beginning and so one thing I would say is you have time just because it's the first music video it absolutely doesn't mean it's the be all and end all it just happens to be the first one and this this um, pillar of the first means nothing at all because the fifth one might be the greatest video in the world and might catapult you to being the next Ed Sheeran but this just happens to be the first. Mm. So what I would say is don't shout about it yet because of the nerve, nervous thing, unless you want to. I think it's more important that you feel comfortable, you get something that you're really proud of, you put it out, and that will make you want to make the second video as quick as possible. So I think that for me is more important that people are comfortable with what they're putting out because mm. earlier on I talked about, you know, get music out there if you can. Well, yeah. it, that's if you feel comfortable with it. If you don't feel comfortable with it, don't do that yeah. you know and i, I think Something musicians else. struggle a lot with with um perfectionism and then confidence issues confidence issues and you put the two together and that's when people start getting troubles mm -hmm. and worrying and, and anxiety and stuff so do what you feel comfortable with but I, I would say for the first one don't put pressure on yourself or, or excess pressure on yourself just because it's the first yeah. one enjoy the process and make sure that you like it enough so that you want to do the second one mm. because the second one will lead to the tenth one and i bet you the tenth one will be amazing now how should you dist distribute it across your socials i think the main thing with this is it depends on what you're trying to achieve and it depends what the strategy is for the music are you promoting an ep mm. so if this was savannah and they've got they've got a music video are they trying to promote this ep mm. Then we're going to the end and we're thinking backwards, in which case, where are we going to put on the socials and what are we trying to do with the socials? But in, in a case of just saying, well, I've got a music video and I want to put it out there. If you just want people to see it and you're just proud of something and you want, you want more people to see you to, to get into your music, then yeah, spread it out. It doesn't make so much difference. You can't put a full music video on Instagram. The main bugbear I have is where musicians just try and take something and cram it across mm -hmm. all socials and they go, well, we've got this, so we just have to put it here and here and here and there's no strategy behind yeah. it. It's just... It's an we, easy mistake to make. Yeah, yeah. we can put it on YouTube, mm -hmm. so why don't we? 
Well, well, you, yeah, but what's the point in doing it? We can put it on Facebook, so obviously you're gonna do that. We can put the music on SoundCloud, we can put the music on Spotify, we can then put it on iTunes, and everything is kind of almost going against each other. So there's lots of clashes and there's no real strategy of hang on a minute. And the only way you can have a strategy is just saying, okay, well, well what is it that we are trying to achieve mm -hmm. first with this video? Is it just eyes? If it, in which case, if it's just eyes, my, my opinion is stick it on Facebook, uh, boost it and start telling the world. Just mm -hmm. get out there and actually talk and talk and talk. Um, and then, you know, whether you put it on YouTube. I, I, most bands' YouTubes I see are pretty awful, if mm -hmm. I'm fair. I mean, I, I would say 99% of bands' YouTubes are rubbish. Mm -hmm. And it's a shame because I think YouTube is so underutilized. And then when, when bands do come along, and, I, you know, I say 99 because I do get hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and there's bands watching that take it seriously, mm -hmm. but you wouldn't believe how many bands don't. Yeah. So... I love it when a band takes their YouTube seriously because yeah. I think it's evergreen content. It's, it's stuff that's going to be there forever, which isn't on Facebook so much because it just goes down in this sort of, this my people can't scroll down for months and months yeah. and months. Whereas YouTube, you can just go and search it, find it, pop up. It's a search engine. So, you know, I, I think that the thing for this first is have your strategy. What is it you're trying to achieve with the video? If it's just getting eyes on the video, then yes, yeah, spread it around. But I think it's what you do after that. So once you've put it somewhere, it's what you're going to do next, which is I'm going to tell everybody yeah. and I'm going to make sure everyone knows. About, I'm going to make people go, oh, enough. I, yeah. I know. <laughs> That's the bit that musicians don't like. Yeah. You know, musicians. Yeah, musicians yeah. don't like sales. I did a, weirdly enough, I did, I put the video out yesterday, the third EP about sales. And actually Sean said, uh, one of the comments he had was, there's a fine line. I feel a little bit uncomfortable with looking desperate when sell it. And, I, and I'm like, N -n you can't. Mm. Like, because musicians have this. There's like, I don't want to oversell. It's not about selling. It's about the art. And I'm like, I absolutely get that. But if you want to get somewhere, you've got to push it. Yeah. And so pushing it isn't just saying, I'll just put that there. Yeah. you got, yeah. you got, you, I mean, this is marketing and, you know, this is, this is actually mm. spreading a message again and again and again and again. And it might take five, six, seven, eight times for someone to ask me to listen to something before I go, oh, sorry, dude, I, I, I will. It's just I'm busy. We all live busy lives. So, you, you know, you, you, it's not desperate. It's, it's, it's just saying, I'm not letting you get away with this. Yeah. And it's the way you do it as well. Desperate yeah. is going, oh, please, please listen to me. Please, please, mm -hmm. please. You're like, yeah, that's desperate. Don't do that. Yeah. But going, no, no. Yeah, just Buy my thing. Yeah. Buy my flipping thing. Mm -hmm. Buy it. That's not desperate. Yeah. That's angry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's somewhat aggressive. <laughs> so, um, you know, so yeah, so yeah, I think I think two things. Number yeah. one, need to have the end goal in sight for the strategy. And B is once it's gone live, doesn't matter where you put it at the moment, what's more importantly is what you're going to do get, yeah. to get to that strategy, to get people to watch it, to get people to do people the thing excited. that you want to do. Yeah, okay. And that's our last question. Good, right, we're yeah. running late, so we've got to yeah. go. So, uh, and if you've got questions, mm. then hashtag Ask Demo. Uh, if you've got stuff to send through, the, the address is below, but I want t-shirts, I want, I want CDs, I want stickers, I want anything for the wall. I'll be promoting it, I'll take a picture with, with in fact, we've got two t-shirts, so we'll take yeah. a picture for the Instagram in a bit, uh, and we'll tag uh, Savannah in it, thanks to them. Uh, otherwise, have a good week. See you next week. Bye.